Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Serious Lars Podcast by Helium 10. I am your host, Bradley Sutton, and this is a show that is our Helium 10 Weekly Buzz, where we give you all of the latest goings-on in the news as far as Amazon, Walmart, and e-commerce. We have interviews with people in the industry you need to hear from and give you training tips of the week that will be for serious strategies for serious sellers of any level in the e-commerce world. Let's go ahead and see what's buzzing. We've got a jam-packed episode as always. We've got some news stories about China potentially opening up, some some more Amazon sponsored display updates and some new multi-channel fulfillment uh, and other news stories as well. We've got a training tip from Kamal from AMZ One Step that talks about a, a great main image hack that he and their clients have been using with a lot of success. And then we've also got a, another training tip where it'll help you make sure you get the most reviews uh, for free. So a way to increase your reviews for free. So make sure to stay for that. Let's go ahead and hop right into the news. All right, our first article of the day comes from just like a pr- kind of press release from the European Commission. And it's actually interesting what it's talking about. Uh, it says, Commission accepts commitments by Amazon barring it from using marketplace seller data and ensuring equal access to buy box and prime. So this was like something that started back in 2019. You know, Amazon was was being looked at by the European Commission uh, about like, for example, something a lot of sellers have been worried about, like, hey, what if what if Amazon is using my data and stuff to launch their own products? So this kind of like ensures that that's not happening. But this second buy box thing is kind of interesting. It says uh, they opened up this thing that says, hey, the winner of the buy box uh, to enable sellers to offer products under its prime program. I, I love how in Europe they they, they, <laughs> they spell program with an E at the end and, and an extra M. Uh, but anyways, they were like, you know, I guess, you know, the commission was worried that people were using uh, or Amazon was like giving preference, uh, you know, to its own products in the buy box. So long story, less long, what Amazon is actually going to do, according to this article, is that, of course, you know, they're, they're reiterating, hey, we're not going to use uh, public data or non-public data in order to launch our own brands and or to you know give a leg up on our own brands. But l- let me actually pause right there. Th- this could be complete random speculation by me. But have you noticed lately, like in the last year, how much Amazon has made public stuff that was never public before? I'm talking brand analytics showing you who is the top three purchase items and the top three, um, the top three clicked. Uh, growth or the the product opportunity explorer giving you insights into ace and level you know reviews and different things that amazon never made public before uh more recently search query performance how you could you know now see the you know overall you know click rate add to cart rate click rate conversion rate even the top 10 now conversions now this could be total speculation by me but you see amazon is making all of these public well that means that Amazon can use this data, you know, per, you know, rules like this, you know, for their own brands or for whatever. So that's just something that that's a maybe like, let's just say, you know, playing devil's advocate, maybe Amazon is making this stuff more public. So maybe they can, you know, do their own brands. But hey, here is something that actually benefits sellers, like more data, more insights. This is great for us. So whatever Amazon's reason is and opening this, I'm like all for it. You know, even if they are going to use it for their own, just just so they can, you know, be in compliance with this but that's great for us because we're getting insights that we never have had before as amazon sellers that's actually from amazon so uh you know back to the article about the buy box as you can see right here this is interesting like let's say amazon an amazon vendor or or amazon brand has is on an item and then somebody else is right there there's actually in europe potentially now going to be two different buy boxes so instead of, you know, th- this kind of takes away from like people who are complaining that Amazon gave its own product, like more percentage of the buy box. Well, now if there's a competitive order, I guess you're going to be able to see two different buy boxes. So do you, what do you guys think of this? Those of you who sell in Amazon Europe and do you think this potentially could come to Amazon USA would be interesting. Now, the uh, second article of the day is multi-channel fulfillment updates. All right. So this is just a news article that came out from Amazon earlier this week that there's now uh, a fee update and faster shipping. So back in the day, it used to be seven days that it would take to, to click and then, uh, or to click and then deliver, you know, deliver the product. Now they're moving it to five days and they're still going to offer the, the three day shipping and the priority 
uh, two-day shipping as well. And they also have uh, new free-to-install multi-channel fulfillment app experiences for Big Commerce, Wix, and Magento. Interesting. No Shopify there. And I, I think there's always there's some beef that happens sometimes between Shopify and Amazon. So interesting updates as far as that goes. Uh, now, the next article that we're going to talk about today is, is something uh, that we always thought Amazon, I thought, was going to be like the first one to do this. We've been talking about this on the buzz for a long time about Amazon using drones for delivery. But now, as you can see, Walmart is now using drones for delivery in Florida. You know, like for if I'm reading this article correctly, it has already started now. So uh, Tampa and Orlando regions, you're going to get drone delivery for a flat fee. All right. So this is very interesting. Like you can purchase tens of thousands of eligible items such as Tylenol, diapers, and hot dog buns. That's a very interesting kind of mix of products there. Uh, for delivery by air in as little as 30 minutes between 8 a.m. and 8 p.m. for a delivery fee of $3.99. There's a video on this article that shows these drones in action. So that is just like kind of mind-boggling to me that they're they're already doing it. You know, the future is now, right? So, um, you know, if you're a buyer, or would you pay $3.99 to get stuff in 30 minutes delivered by drone? If this works, you know, again, you know, whether you sell on Walmart or Amazon, both of these companies have 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 said they are investing in drones. Um, so potentially our third uh, our third party products, private label products, might be able to be delivered by drone. So that would be interesting. Did you ever think you'd be making products that robots basically would be delivering? All right. The next article that we have is a couple of different sponsor display updates. You know, it seems like every week Amazon is adding to uh, sponsor display. And this first one here is entitled Sponsor Display Video Creative Now Supports Contextual Targeting to Better Showcase Products and Brands. All right. So, you know, contextual uh, targeting is something that Amazon has been rolling out with different ad types. And now you're going to be able to do it with these sponsored video ads, you know, being able to do contextual targeting and audiences. All right. So if, if you're a bigger seller, you know, if you're a brand new seller, you know, maybe this is not something you need to be um, you know, heavily investing in making making these kind of things yet. But if you're a bigger seller, this could be something that you should be looking into. And, and the video creative capability for this sponsor display video is up to 45 seconds. All right. So just, you know, keep that in mind as well. And this is available throughout North America, South America, Europe, Middle East, and Asia and all of those different, uh, in all of those different marketplaces. Another launch, again, sponsor display related that Amazon talked about this week or last week, I should say, was launching view metrics for video creative. So now that you can do these video ads for sponsor display, now you're going to be able to to see things like, you know, how long people are watching the videos, you know, do they turn the audio on and off, like where do they drop off of the video and things like that. So again, um sellers and vendors can both have access to this. Uh the next article I wanted to talk about today was uh from Hong Kong, I think it was called the Hong Kong Standard and it says uh, China to scrap compulsory quarantine for inbound travelers on January 3rd. Now, this could be interesting, you know, for, for the longest time, right? You know, we haven't really been able to go into to go into Amazon or into, into Amazon, <laughs> into China, right? As, as tourists or as business, you know, without this crazy long quarantine time. But according to this article, starting from January 3rd, it's going to have a zero plus three policy, which basically means China will fully open in 2023. Now, zero plus three, what that means is, is that inbound travelers will only need to spend three days for medical observation at their homes or choice of hotels after all compulsory quarantine requirements are canceled, all right? Um, so I'm not sure exactly what that means. Does that still mean a quarantine of, of three days or just kind of like loose, like you just got to let them know where you're going to be, and, and but you can pretty much do your own thing. But, you know, I haven't been to China uh, in years, and, and so it's going to be interesting uh, if this opens up, you know, can I now go visit some of my factories and things like that? One thing I did hear is that if you did have a previous visa, like, for example, I had a 10-year visa to China, I think I have to go apply for a new one. Like, like I supposedly all of those are now defunct, if I'm not mistaken. I might have to go to the embassy and get a new one. But I, I'm going to have Kian on in, in, a, in a couple episodes to try and, uh, you know, see what's going on with uh, China travel. And then this would be very, very cool for doing sourcing trips or potentially visiting your factories. All right. Now, before we get into our first tip of the day, I wanted to just call out something that, you know, Helium 10 has so many different tools, as we all know, that it's kind of hard to know how to use them all. 
if you wanted for your team or you yourself to just have a logical way to learn how to use all of the Helium 10 tools, make sure to sign up for our completely free academy. It's h10.me forward slash academy. You can require like all your employees to go through it. And it has all of our learn button videos in a, a course style kind of format so that they can learn, uh, you know, tool by tool how to use all of Helium 10. Now, at the end of it, there actually is an optional quiz or, or certification where if you want to make sure these your employees really learn what, what's going on, um, it's kind of like Adobe certification. I forgot what the cost is, like 70 something dollars, but we have like a hundred question test that they have to get 80% on to really be certified. And then this certification is accredited and it goes to like, you know, LinkedIn profile and different things like that. So sometimes, you know, maybe you'll give them a whole, you know, your employees, like a whole bunch of tasks and you're not, not sure if they really understand everything. Well, if you require them to do that certification, that's another way you can like double check to make sure they're proficient. But again, the regular academy, just to go through the actual course is 100% free. It's only that, that accreditation that, you know, would cost money. So again, h10.me forward slash academy. Now, um, something that we're going to do a, a special episode in a, in about a week or so that the last one of the year, and this is usually a favorite episode of the year for a lot of people is, is we combine a lot of our our 60 and 30 second tips that our guests have been doing on the podcast. And then we put it all into like one episode, like the best of the best so that you can, you know, maybe see some of the top tips that you might have missed. Well, uh, right now I'm going to give you one of those tips uh, so that you can get a kind of a preview of this episode. And this one's going to be from Kamal from uh, AMZ One Step. Let's see what his tip is. Okay. So how level it strategy works is, for example, uh, if you're selling a, uh, you know, if, if you search on Amazon, search for protein powders, you're going to see lots of, you know, uh, bottles and everything. And you'll see that 25 grams of protein, you know, popping out or something. It looks like it's part of that label, but it's not. And it, it, it kind of deceives the Amazon's bot system that Amazon would still accept that. And try to come up with the, your unique selling point using the label it strategy. Let's say if your product does not have a label or packaging, how do you use it? Best example is, you know, think of, take a look at the cutting board on Amazon, you're going to come up with a bestseller. The person, it, it's the Gorilla brand. They are they are the masters of this strategy. So they have three cut, cutting boards in a set of three different sizes. They have labeled it around. It come maybe it comes with the label, maybe it does not. Uh, but they have used their unique selling point uh, as an infographic, like extra large cutting boards, which you know which gives you a competitive advantage. It looks like it's the label, and Amazon system cannot catch it you have a competitive edge using the label it strategy and it can be used on many others and we all right so that's an interesting you know tip it's kind of like you know like being able to offer more information without violating amazon terms as far as you know you can't really have infographics on your main image right so this is kind of a way around that rule so interesting tip uh, if you want to have uh, 16 other top tips from the entire year make sure to tune in to our end of the year special episode in a couple of weeks. All right, let's go into the Helium 10 tip of the week. And this is something that could benefit every single seller, no matter what level you guys are. And it's about, you know, automating review requests. I've seen in the Facebook groups lately and other people saying, oh, you know, I used to use the Helium 10 Chrome extension for requesting the review. And now, you know, it's not working anymore. I'm like, what were you still using that old thing that we kind of like sunset like a long time ago and it's because people thought that that's the only way to activate the amazon request review so what the amazon request review is if you go to your orders you can actually let me go ahead and show this to you so what you do is you like go into your orders you know from from amazon and then you just click on one of your orders that's been at least seven days ago and then there's this button on the top right called request a review and then you just hit that button and then it'll request a review from your uh, buyers, all right, 100% Amazon terms of service compliant, and, and you get one chance per order to do that. And so a lot of people have been, they prefer to do that as opposed to do custom emails because they're afraid that maybe Amazon might not like a certain language that they're giving. So that's fine. And so what people are doing is where they're using an older, you know, Chrome extension in order to, to do that, but that is not needed. All right, you, any level of Helium 10, whether it's Elite, Diamond, Platinum, you guys have full access to our follow-up tool and it's much, much better to use it there. And a lot of people thought that follow-up is only for those custom emails, you know, where, where sometimes you, you might get flagged by Amazon if you're not using the right language. 
But no, follow-up is also for this automated request review. And the benefit of doing it through follow-up as opposed to just hitting this button, I mean, that's obvious. Like, I don't want to go into every button, uh, you know, every order and hit this button. But even from the old Chrome extension that did everything on the page is you want to custom make sometimes when people get that review request. Like, if you're selling a supplement, for example, you don't want that review request to go out as soon as they get the product or even seven days after. Like, they, they haven't had enough time to try out the supplement you want to go all the way to the max like 25 days after it arrives or something like that or after they've had a chance to actually try the product out and could have an opinion on it conversely let's say you're selling party straws or something and you think most of your customers like they order it and then that weekend they're doing the party right well you don't want to send them a review request three weeks after they got the product maybe they forgot about it right so you might want them to get it right away at the same time, there's different people maybe you don't want to send review requests for, like somebody who asked for a refund or that you that they were on a special discount, you know, like you gave them a coupon. You might not want to send them review requests because on the first case, they might get, you know, that might be more of a chance that you got a bad review if they ask for a refund. And under the second case, you know, like if you gave a discount to somebody or they had a coupon, some sellers don't want to give Amazon the wrong idea, like they're incentivizing the review, so they don't want a review request sent to somebody who got a discount. Well, you can automate all of this through follow-up. Let me quickly show you how. All right, all you have to do is go to follow-up, all right? You hit the automation. This is so easy, guys, all right? And now let's go ahead, let me pick one of our items that we don't have one for. I'm gonna pick the stackable egg rack, all right? So I'm just gonna copy this because this is a, obviously a big seller for us, but we don't have an automation, so let me just copy that. And then I'm going to go up here to new automation, all right? And then right here, right? I hit new automation. And then I want to do send a message to request a review. This is actually using the Amazon request a review template. I hit create a new automation. And I already have defaulted less than 30%, you know, filter. Uh, so discounts less than 30%, meaning that, hey, if, if there's any discount at all, it has to be less than 30%. Otherwise, I don't want this to go out. You know, you might want to change this to 10% or even nothing. Like, hey, I don't want th this message to go out to anybody who got a discount at all. I suggest doing it uh, by by also the ASIN. So, all right. So, as you can see here, there's other filters I can use. Like, hey, only the ones who are in a certain country or if they're a repeated buyer. That's also a good one to use. Like, maybe you only want the review request to go out to people who have ordered this more than once or on the opposite side, you only want this to go out to people who this is their first ever purchase of your product, all right? So you can do you can do it either way with this. You can do it for item, you know, a certain uh, items that have a certain price. I like to do the ASIN filter, all right? So I'm gonna go ahead and say positive match here for the ASIN, and I just put in that egg rack ASIN, and I hit add filter, all right? So now, as you can see, this is gonna go out to anybody with a discount of less than 30%, with this ASIN being the egg rack, right? And then here, I wanna edit the timeline, all right? So after the order was delivered, wait for seven days or more. So I, I'm gonna change this up a little bit. I'm gonna say wait for 10 days. So let's give them some time to display their eggs. You know what, nah, let, let's go like 12 days, all right? I'm gonna say wait 12 days, give them some time to experience this egg rack, and I'm gonna hit that, and then request review, boom, that's it, all right? So once I do that, I just hit save and exit, and it's going ahead and, and checking to make sure we're compliant. And it says, yep, I hit everything correctly. I'm gonna hit save and activate. Boom goes the dynamite. I'm completely done. I'm never gonna have to worry about this again. What's gonna happen now, every time I sell an egg rack, 12 days after it delivers, as long as nobody, you know, it's not a refund, as long as it uh, doesn't have a discount of over 30%, the buyer is going to get an automated email from Amazon, not my own email that I'm writing, the Amazon request review, and they're gonna be able to go ahead and you know potentially leave a review for my product or be reminded of one. So this is something that a lot of you sellers are not using right now and you all have access to it. It's completely free if you have Helium 10. So make sure to set those up for 2023 right now. All right, guys, that's it for today's weekly buzz. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. We'll see you next week to see what's buzzing.